All right, guys. Well, as you guys can see from the title, man, we have a bit of a bit of an upgrade for the Z, you know. And uh, this has been something that's probably been, um, I guess, long overdue. Just at least from the time that I've been down here in Texas, man, I really should have gotten to this um, a while ago so I could have AC. Because right now, uh, the car just runs pretty damn hot, um, especially out here in Texas, man. With the with the road temps are probably like 140 degrees, you know, and the air temps at least 100, you know. So this thing is getting a little bit warm. Now, it's pretty common for these swaps with this chassis to uh, run a little bit hot just because of the crampedness of the engine bay. Uh, I already have a tucked uh, radi uh, radiator set up. This radiator is actually just like a universal Griffin one uh, that I already had modified uh, to work with my 240. So the nice part is I'll probably be able to at least remove this radiator, put it back in the 240 where it came from. And then today we're gonna start the process of uh, fitting up our V-mount kit for the car. Now, this is it involves a little bit of work because first off, well, intercooler piping will be different because we are switching up our intercooler and um, as well as all of our radiator hoses. So this uh, intercooler is actually for an RX-7, um, not really for this chassis, but it's gonna work from what I'm aware. Uh, over here is just like our little, like this is where we're gonna fill up our coolant. So it's kind of like a swirl pot. Pretty neat, that comes with a radiator. This is a radiator, this is actually for a Z32. CX Racing makes this kit for like an LS swapped Z. So this actually should bolt up semi-decently Easy, easy, I don't know, we'll see. Um, easy is never, it's never easy with these kits, you know? <laughs> so, and then here's just a bag of hardware, the brackets and whatnot, some clamps, and then here we have our radiator hoses. Uh, they're actually hard lines, well, hard pipes, uh, aluminum. So that'll be pretty cool, look pretty nice in the bay. Hopefully they'll work. If they don't work, we'll have to chop them up and weld them up, but, you know, as you guys can see, this has got some crazy, fittings on here and it obviously has no cap. So it is uh, literally meant to be V-mounted and uh, we're gonna go ahead and unfortunately, we're not gonna be seeing our big old dirty front mount in the in the front of the car anymore, but you know what, that's okay. Uh, I'd much rather have the, uh, the coolness, you know, cooling this car down would be much more important for me. So right now the car runs, I know I'm talking, I'm sorry, we're about to get into this in just a second, but the car right now runs at like 230 degrees. So, whoa, you know, especially on the highway. So we gotta tone that down to like 170, 180. And that's all gonna be possible with this kit. So let's just get to it. So out with the old, man, this thing is just a straight up bug catcher, you know? That I was never gonna get cleaned out. And then uh, there's my DIY temporary shroud that I made like last minute before this road trip. And I thought it worked, but, and that, that piece is aluminum. That's why it's not like tack welded to that piece. But yeah, you know, I thought it worked. It seemed like it did help, but I don't know. Like after it got really hot out, it just didn't seem to really do much. So. Yes, um, now sad part, man, sad part. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this, which has just been, you know, I think personally my favorite part of the build. All right, well, you guys can see I got both the old intercooler and now the old radiator uh, out. So um, yeah, I would not have been able to fit two 12s, but I will be able to fit the uh, 12 and the 11. If we come over here now, check this out. We got this kind of semi where it's gonna be. Uh, I'm pretty excited because dude, the intercooler piping is gonna be so short. I mean, literally will be like 18 inches. Look at that crazy whereas this went all the way down it, it should maybe spool a little bit better right that would make sense but i'm sure as like time goes on we're gonna revise you know all the piping and stuff like that 
Um, just want to get this up and running. So we got this crash bar here. Obviously we have the mounts on the intercooler on the top right there. So basically what I'm thinking is I'm gonna chop away a bit of this uh, portion of the frame right here so that it can sit flush against like this headlight housing. I will then drill some holes through here, bolt up the intercooler. Also, by the way, I couldn't find a couldn't file a, find a drain pan, so all my all my coolant is in this box. <laughs> you know, so Doesn't get uh, doesn't get more scientific than the iPhone level, you know. All right, let's get this intercooler leveled out. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna go ahead and just try and just temporarily hang the intercooler, and then uh, get the jack out the way and uh, try and mock up the, the radiator now because uh, I don't want to mount the intercooler in a specific location, especially hinged you know, permanently in the back, just in case I do have to move it a little bit to get clearance for the radiator. So let's go ahead and string it up and keep on jamming, man. It's looking it's really good. I'm super stoked, dude. This is gonna be, this is gonna be nice. Okay, so this goes like this. All right, guys. Well, it's the next day. Uh, <laughs> excuse the mess, but every time I like put stuff away, I literally just grab that stuff again and use it, and then it turns out to become this again. So, uh, I really need to get like, hey, man, I need to get like a, a like a work table I can move around, you know, and just have everything on on the table as opposed to on the ground. But given time, maybe we could build something. I feel like we could definitely build something. But, uh, updates, I got some updates, guys. So, um, obviously you guys can see we have our radiator install, well, installed. Now, all the brackets that came with this kit are like your universal, kind of like slidey slide, adjustable brackets. And hang on, I just wanna make sure you guys can see me. You guys can uh, hopefully maybe tell that uh, the brackets down here, they're just, they're literally just, you know, L brackets that have notches in them. And then if we come down here, it looks even worse because there's two brackets connected and it's just, it's just kind of janky looking. So my thought process behind this is yes, these brackets are gonna work for us right now. And uh, I will probably just temporarily keep them. However, I'm, I've already been like in my head engineering and like designing some really nice fancy brackets for all this stuff uh, that I'll go ahead and weld up in the future. When this car gets torn apart and goes in for like version two or three, whatever you want to call it. We'll go ahead and really dial in this in, in the like the mounting and stuff like that because you know when we go ahead and repaint the bay and this and that, we can actually like build the car around this new setup if it works out for us. So this is in position where it's gotta be. You guys can kind kind of see. Um, it's kind of flush with like, oh, well, not really, but it's almost flush with like the end of the lower radiator support. So um, it's pretty cool. We have a lot of room up here now. Obviously, it doesn't really matter because we have no fans going back here. All the fans will be behind this radiator. Uh, that leads me to my next point. I actually just picked up uh, at the O'Reilly's. First time I've ever been to an O'Reilly's, bro. It's pretty incredible. They uh, they had some of these like quick mount fan kits. So uh, actually, gonna go ahead and rip this off and uh, mount my two fans. I already obviously have them wired up and you guys can also see our swirl pot going on over here so this is going to kind of be the setup i will also eventually like to get this just directly like tig welded um onto here like that something like that you know that way there's no coupler 
but I don't have a TIG welder right now. I really want to get a TIG machine, man. I really would like to, but we got we to save up for that. Let's just go ahead, man. I'm going to continue. We're going to wrench and uh, get this thing complete. All right, guys, so quick little tip on uh, pusher versus puller um, as far as like setting them up and wiring because the wiring is also different. So you guys can see this one says pusher. This one actually says puller. Basically, uh, the way you have this fan blade oriented will dictate whether it's a pusher or a puller. Um, it will probably say it right on here like it does. Pusher, obviously. So uh, this one needs to be switched to pull. Now the way to do that, we'll take off this clip flip the fan and then also so you just flip the two wires it then rotates the uh, the direction of the fan so uh, figure out what you need depending on where your fan is placed if it's on the back side make sure it's a pusher if it's on the back side make sure it's a puller and if it's in the front side make sure it's a pusher my burritos are done forgot about those that's a that's just, that's good news. Now what you don't want to do, I did this like last time I took this and, and switched the blades. I hammered this top little bit and it kind of mushroomed the top to try and remove it. So this was also a pain to get off last time, but it's just a jimmier. You just got to jimmy it. Oh wow, it's harder than I remember. All right, so um, you guys can see, flip it, boom, puller. And it's got these little weights on it. I'm guessing that's to balance it, so don't remove them. And then it's got these little notches that it, you know, grips into so it can't slip. Ow. Pop your clip back on. And there we go. Perfect, ready to be mounted. Pick yourself a fin. I always hate ruining the fins, you know? It's always kind of a bummer. And yes, I am watching Top Gear in the background. It's the Bolivia Special. It's the good one. <laughs> well, it's a good one. All right, so now we'll remove this fan off of here. We'll deal with that later. Pull these on through. Uh, I, don't, I don't usually take off the sticky part, but you know what, screw it. The sticky part just kind of, I don't know, just gets gross. <laughs> when it comes time to take it off. But obviously you don't plan on removing it that frequently, so slide them on like that. Okay, and then we'll toss the little locking washer on. And I don't, I don't put them too tight because then that way they have tension on them and they like to kind of work their way out. Just a nice little snug against the foam and that should be good to go, man. And then we'll obviously chop the, chop the you know, the extra off, but if you guys want, I'll try and have these uh, little fan kits in my Amazon store for you guys. So you can go ahead and grab those. If I can run AC efficiently and have the car run at 175, 180, I'm more than content. Right now, bro, on the highway, <laughs> dude, I'm at like 230 at times. Like, man, I've gotten up to like 233 and it's just like, oh my God, like even with the heat on, like not fully blasting, but damn. So one thing actually that I'm gonna do is actually put a piece of rubber here or something. Uh, burritos are done again, so I have to reheat them. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go eat my, I'm gonna go eat my food, be back. All right, guys, well, I uh, had the GoPro charging. It's been a probably a couple of hours, and I had some lunch and chill that I honestly took like a 30-minute nap in my, in my damn chair over there. But I'm back. I think I'm ready to get back into it and uh, button this thing up. So to catch you guys up, we have everything kind of buttoned up up here, as you guys can see. Um, bumper is on. It's just kind of chilling. I just wanted to see how we, how we are with fitment and uh, stuff like that. So this will all kind of go up and uh, the bumper will kind of sit right along this top line of the radiator. So that's kind of cool. Like I said, the only like downfall about not running a shroud is that we're gonna see these little like nubs from the radiator fans. And you know, I mean, it's really not the end of the world, um, but I, I, it would have been nice not to see those. And then I do actually have to create like some sort of like a panel here on the side to, to cap those off because, well, first off, it just doesn't look very good. Um, that is that is one thing I will have to do for sure. So um, coming up here though, we're looking pretty good. This is all I got my like the whole hose scenario for the radiator is all complete, man. So I was actually able to use almost everything. Uh, two of the hoses that I used uh, were actually stuff that I had laying around and. Uh, 
part of it was from like my initial hose setup. So, <sighs> okay, well, I haven't necessarily finished that over there, but I just wanna get this coolant out the way, my bag of coolant. Cause I mean, come on, you know? I'm gonna try and figure out the best way to pour this back in the car here. I'm kind of afraid that if I like poke a hole that it's just gonna, the hole's just gonna, oh no, 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 oh, save that. The hole's just gonna blow out and go everywhere, you know, that would suck. So I know I'm cheap, I'm reusing my coolant, but you know. <laughs> You gotta double check, make sure whatever you're pouring is and isn't just dumping right out, you know? Okay. Okay, we are on to something. We are on to something. This is gonna work. May look a little bit weird, but it's, it's gonna work. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, a couple 90s, some weird, like a 70, you know? augmented and stuff it's pretty great all right guys so um catching you up to where we're at so i actually went ahead and i ordered some like aluminum i ordered about a 12 by 12 piece i don't know what the hell i was thinking because it's way too small for what the hell i need it for and unfortunately what i bought isn't really the thickest stuff i mean it's more so like tin at this point but i mean it's gonna work for what I need it for right now. This is a uh, 0.025 of a thickness and that's just way too thin. So currently, as you guys can see, I'm, uh, I'm making out some, uh, some little like panels to kind of close in the radiator. So hopefully you can kind of tell. This one, I've it's placed, it's not fully installed, but then over here you can see, I mean, we just have emptiness, you know? So that'll clean it up, make it look a whole lot nicer in here. Uh, for the time being until we actually get like some something properly made up again this is I, I just need to get this car back up on the road and and if this all works really well like this whole setup then we'll go ahead and kind of finalize everything especially with the intercooler piping and stuff like that so uh and the bracketry and the mounts and everything so i kind of made that whole deal up there and i know it's crooked just i know i'm this is like i said i was just jamming i want to get this done uh to just figure out if it's all good to go so and last but not least, I have to go ahead and mount my power steering reservoir uh, in a new location. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just button this up. But uh, the Z is uh, complete, I guess, with the whole the deal. I got my mesh also, and you guys can see why it's like bunched up right there. So that's also one of the, re that's the main reason why I have to go ahead and readjust it and move some things around. But you guys can see, we got the mesh installed. It's like a much finer mesh. So you can't really see uh, the fan mounts, which is pretty cool, which is what I wanted to do because I didn't really like the little black dots on the on the radiator. So that covered it up really nicely. Uh, but other than that, it looks pretty rad. So now the next step is to go ahead and test this whole setup out. I made sure my fans worked. But let's go ahead. I'm gonna put the nose piece back on, and then we'll go and take this thing for a drive. I have some errands to run. We're actually picking up Morgan today, so uh, super exciting. But let's go ahead, get inside, and uh, well, eventually, you guys, for you guys, will be right away. But I'm gonna clean it up really quick, and we're gonna go ahead and run some errands. See how this thing performs. V-mounted first drive, first drive. However, it's not really a first drive. This is <laughs> this is well, well into this vid uh, video, months down the line. But we're gonna show you guys kind of the temperature difference. By the way, I got my homie from New York with me. What's good, my guy? Finally got down. Yes, sir. Um, so we are actually headed to Texas 2K today, but I wanted to get you guys in on the, the temperature changes and how cool this thing actually runs because I told you guys before, this thing was running at like 220, 230 on the highway sometimes. Uh, 
that's that's not good and I didn't even have AC and that was with me like running with the heat on not good no good. not good <laughs> dude so you guys can see it 230 is now way up right there is two no that's 240 so in between 240 like in this area is where I used to kind of chill on the highway so uh, I had to by the way put a thermostat back in the car because it would never warm up so we're gonna go for a quick little spin I'm gonna show you guys kind of where my temps chill at while cruising I'll show you guys how efficient the setup actually is won't be leaving till later till later yeah he's got some meeting at like noon or one or something I, I told him he wants to come to barbecue with us but you know, he's gonna be busy well had all right, just want to show you guys right now. We're at 179, 180. I'll just just watch how fast it goes down. But 
I was I was pedaling it too because I really didn't want to floor it to see what it was at. It was kind of like 13.7. I got a lean trip on my ECU, so ah, that sucks. I really won't be able to beat on this car that much, but at least we'll be able to see how much miles per gallon it gets, which <laughs> is probably pretty poor. It's probably pretty poor. Probably not great. On E85, it's about eight to nine miles per gallon, no matter what I'm doing. So. So, as you guys can see, super efficient, proven setup, it works. Very budget friendly considering the fact that most tucked radiators are very, very expensive. This, I will have the link in the description if you guys would like to go with this setup. And um, yeah, as you can see, it, it tucks away pretty well. And uh, I've been driving like this for, man, half a year, give or take. Working pretty, pretty solid, so happy with it for sure. Um, I guess next step is to get the AC working and, and that's going to be pretty, pretty exciting. I've never had working air conditioning in this car. And then after that, I would like to maybe eventually just redo the fuel system. Just, just, just because it's, 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 well, we don't have the best injectors. I'll just put it that way. But for this one, that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed a uh, lot of, well, first off, I'm sure if you guys are new, check out the GTR build. This thing has escalated. I'm sure you guys have been keeping up to date with it though engine is at the build well it's not at the builders i'm going to be building it it's actually at the machine shop so we should be getting it back hopefully pretty soon i'm hearing some good news about the block and the head so i'm pretty excited next video you guys are probably going to see is either the how i got this thing cost breakdown everything like that because i know you guys have been blowing me up about that and uh, i also have like a little vlog i'm going to see if you guys uh enjoy it. it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool vlog but that's going to be coming up next for today that's gonna be it. If you guys are not subscribed, make sure you go ahead and hit that red button down below, toss a like if you enjoyed, drop a comment, say what's up, and uh, well, that's gonna be it. See you guys in the next one. Peace, oh yeah, buy some merch, link below, peace.